Here we have lots of integrals involving Bessel functions, more specifically integrals from zero to infinity of Bessel functions of odd order. And the idea is to start by the Bessel function of order one and then work your way up to the other orders uh, after that. So pause the video and see if you can uh, show this for yourself. And then from time to time, I will try to drop some useful hints to help you along. First hint, in case you're stuck, why don't you try to use the following formula, which we've shown in the past, namely that d dx of x to the power of minus n j n x, that this thing is equal to minus x to the power of minus n j n plus 1 of x. So this could be a useful formula, so try and see if you can take the next step by taking the integral of, of this particular formula. So when we take the integral of both the left-hand side and the right-hand side, we see that on the left-hand side, the d dx and the integral will cancel. So basically, we have the result for the integral here on the right-hand side. Now, this is an integral on the right-hand side here of uh, j of order n plus 1. In our case, we're looking at an integral of j1. So in order to be useful for us, we need to have that n plus 1 is equal to n. To, to 1 rather, and that means that n is equal to 0. So when we do that, we get for the left hand side uh, x to the power of minus 0, so that's just 1. We have j0 of x evaluated between the bounds infinity and 0, is minus the integral from 0 to infinity of x to the power of minus 0, j1x dx. So we're almost there. We just need to evaluate uh, what we have here on the left-hand side. First of all, the upper bound, j0 at infinity. So don't forget, at infinity, all of the Bessel functions vanish. So in the limit, this will become 0. And then at the origin, at the origin, j0 is the only Bessel function which has a non-zero result, namely 1. So this becomes minus 1. So altogether, we have shown indeed that our integral here is equal to 1. So that's a good first step. Uh, but you might wonder, why do we use this particular formula over here? There was also another formula that looked uh, suspiciously similar, namely the uh, formula d dx of x to the power of n j n x equal to x to the power of n j n minus 1 of x. So also here, we could take the integral of the left-hand side and the right-hand side, and that would be uh, something interesting. Now, the difference here is that in order for us to be useful and to give us an integral of a Bessel function of order 1, now we don't have the situation that n plus 1 is equal to 1, but rather n minus 1 should be equal to 1. So n minus 1 equal to 1, that means that n should be equal to 2. But that means that on the right-hand side, we have an integral of x to the power of 2 j1 dx. So this particular formula will help us to evaluate that integral, but it's not useful in our case because we do not have this x squared there. So depending on the situation, it's more useful to start from this formula or from that formula. But in our case, that formula is not really helpful. Okay. Pause the video and now try to take the next steps by looking at other odd orders of Bessel functions. And again, if you're stuck, I will come back after the break with a small hint. The hint here is to use the following formula. Again, formulas which we've shown in the past, namely j n minus 1 of x minus j n plus 1 of x is equal to 2 j n prime of x. Why is this a useful formula? Well, again, if we integrate this, both left-hand side and right-hand side, here we will have a relationship between integrals of Bessel functions 
which are two apart in their order, which is useful in our case. And then on the right hand side, if we can evaluate that, that will also help us to determine that relationship between these integrals of Bessel functions of orders two apart. So this sounds like a promising thing to try. Pause the video and see if you can do that for yourself. Okay, let's get going. Uh, integrating this from minus infinity to plus infinity gives us j n minus one x dx minus the integral from zero to infinity j n plus one x dx. <clears throat> and then for the right hand side, we have two and then j n of x, but evaluated between infinity and zero. Let's evaluate that formula for n equal to 2. Now, in that case, we get the integral of j1 minus the integral over j3. And that is equal on the right-hand side to 2 times. Well, for the upper bound at infinity, the Bessel function vanishes. Um, so it's basically j, j2 here. So at infinity, the Bessel function vanishes. And j2 at the origin will also give us zero. So the end result is zero, basically telling us that the integral of j1, which we calculated to be one, is exactly the same as the integral over j3. And then we can keep on playing this game by plugging in uh, all sorts of different numbers here so that finally we can show that this is true for all possible uh, values, all possible odd uh, orders of the Bessel function.